There are two ravens that sit on his shoulders and whisper all the news they see and hear into his ear. They are called Hugin and Moonin. He sends them out in the morning to fly around the whole world, and by breakfast, they are back again. He finds out many new things, and this is why he is called Raven God. Throughout the years, Odin has been depicted as the wise Allfather, ever vigilant and ever knowing. A source of this vast knowledge and perception displayed by Odin can be linked to the connection with his two raven companions, Hugin and Munin. And the name Hugin derives from Old Norse and means thought, whereas Munin can be roughly translated to mind or memory, concepts that are shown to be highly valued by Odin. Odin's association with the ravens goes as far back as the 6th century AD, hundreds of years before the Viking Age in the 8th century. Even in these times, Odin was quite often depicted as being accompanied by one or more ravens. It was quite common for stories in early poetry of the Viking Age to refer to Odin as the Raven God, the Raven Tempter, and even the Priest of Raven Sacrifice. The sacrifice referred to that of fallen warriors in battle, it was believed that Odin decided who lived in battle and who was sacrificed to the ravens and the other carrion birds who would feast on their remains. Slaying someone in battle was also considered to be given the raven a gift. Sometimes warriors were even referred to as feeders of the raven. The gift of a slain warrior in battle was also seen as a gift to Odin as he was the ruler of the dead in Valhalla. It became pretty common practice to attempt to appease Odin and his ravens before battle with the sacrifice of an effigy in the form of your enemy. Every morning at the crack of dawn, Odin would send Hugin and Munin across the Norse world. They would return by supper, where they would perch upon his shoulders and inform him of what they had seen and heard. We can see the connection between Odin and his ravens in the poetic Edda Grimnismal, where Odin says, Hugin and Munin fly over all the world I worry for Hugin that he might not return, but I worry more for Munin. We can look at this as an example that Odin cares for his companions, but it could also be said that the birds are an extension of Odin himself. There are some scholars who make the case that Hugin and Munin are embodiments of Odin's luck. In traditional Norse culture, the spirit can be broken down into many parts and can be separated. Odin's luck is believed to be the part that he sent out on errands and thus we have Hugin and Munin as physical embodiments. There are no discerning features that make Hugin and Munin stand out. They appear as regular run-of-the-mill ravens, large haunting birds with sharp beaks, beady eyes and thick black feathers. You could argue that Hugin and Munin having their own unique appearance would impede their daily task. Appearing as regular ravens meant that they could travel undetected, gathering all the information they needed and arousing no suspicion. If this wasn't the case, then they could easily be identified, and it's likely that they would be targeted by the enemies of Odin and those seeking knowledge. Despite appearing as ordinary birds, the two are quite far from that, and they possess some quite interesting abilities. Being able to fly across the entire Norse world in a day would mean that they would have to travel at speeds greater than any ordinary bird was capable of. They were also able to understand and speak the language of men. It sounds very much like Hugin and Munin were merely Odin's spies, but they were much more than just that. Ravens are generally considered as intelligent birds, but these two were capable of making complex observations and served as advisors. They would often follow Odin into battle, scouting ahead and advising the god on how he should approach the opposing forces. Hugin and Munin were undoubtedly two of Odin's most important companions, and it was no coincidence that they were depicted as ravens. The connection of the ravens and the Norse people is one that stems quite far back. The early Norse people were hunters, and recognising the pattern, it was common for ravens to follow the trail of hunters for several days, waiting to feed on what remained of the hunt. Sometimes these roles were even reversed, with the hunters following the ravens as they circled the skies in search for a meal. The bond between man and animal was created when the Norse people embarked on sea voyages, they took ravens with them in cages. The ravens would be released, and they would guide the boats to land. Upon arriving in these unfamiliar lands, people would follow the ravens who led them towards food. The ravens played quite an integral role in the everyday lives of the Norse people, 
and they were even revered by many. It's no real surprise that Hugin and Munin also played an integral role in Norse mythology. The ravens would be remembered forever, as they took their place perched upon the shoulders of the Allfather, Odin. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, if you did, then let me know what you thought in the comments below. I am pretty excited about the next couple of weeks because I have quite a few videos that I think you guys will really enjoy and I can't wait to start recording them. The first patron voted video will also be out in the next couple of days so stay tuned for all of that. But as always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.